I'm Zumpy Nubs, and this is the Table Saw Super Sled Part 2. I really wanted this sled to have more features than any other one out there, and really useful features, like fully adjustable miter bars with built-in hold downs. There's nothing worse than trying to cut a precise miter and having the end deflect away from the blade as you move it through. That's one of the biggest benefits of this sled. You can clamp your workpiece down and it just makes it so much more accurate. You can do any angle you like. I made one for both sides of the blade too. I also made these micro adjusters that attach to the fence. They work with all the jig attachments. They slip onto the fence and up against your stop block or whatever one of the jigs that you're using. And you lock the adjuster down and then as you turn the wing nut, the spring-loaded end pushes against your jig, adjusting its position. When you get it where you want it, you lock the jig down and you go. It's great for fine-tuning everything. The first of the three major jigs is the tenon jig. And really, it's much more than a tenon jig. It'll cut half laps, bridle joints, anything that requires a workpiece to stand up on end. Randy tried to cut an apple with it. Set off the saw stop. Moron. You slide it onto the fence and you lock it in place at whatever distance from the blade that you want to make your cut. The workpiece is kept perpendicular to the table by a little fence while you clamp it down. Because the whole thing rides on a sled, you don't have to worry about your workpiece shifting as you push it through the blade. A lot of tenon jigs suffer from that problem because the end of the workpiece drags across the top of the table saw. It's not a problem with this setup. Taking the same amount off both sides will keep the tendon centered and it makes it easy to get a good fit because you can cut two of the cheeks and then you can take it over and check it on your mortise. If it's uh, too big, then you just use your micro adjuster to move your cutter just a little bit closer to the blade and then you run it again on both faces. This is great because you really don't have to make test cuts on scraps if you do it that way. Just be sure you don't cut it too narrow to begin with. You can always remove more wood, but it's hard to put it back on, eh? After you cross-cut the waist away, you end up with a perfect tenon. It's the same process for half laps. Well, half the steps, anyway. The next jig I made for the sled is for splined miters. This attaches to the fence the same way that all the jigs do. The difference is you move the fence rather than the whole jig to adjust the position of the spline. You understand what I mean? You don't want to cut a whole bunch of kerfs in the bottom of your jig. You always put it in the same position and then you adjust the fence so you move your workpiece. I always use a full 1 8 kerf blade because it's easy to buy 1 8 inch thick material to use for spline stock, but you could use any kerf, just you'll have to make your own material. This process really strengthens your miters, especially on picture frames or boxes, and some people think it's a decorative element too. Now the finger joint jig is my favorite one. Setting it up is pretty simple. I didn't get any footage of it, but you want to begin with the left metal finger just far enough to the right of your saw blade that you can slip a piece of your material between them. Then lock that half down with the two wing nuts. You probably already have some type of scrap that you use to do a test cut to make sure your dado thickness matches your wood thickness. So take that and put it over top of the two fingers so that you can set the distance between them. If you work with this particular material like this uh, type of plywood a lot, just save that scrap and write the number of chippers and shims on your dado set on it. So you can use it not only to set up your dado set in the future, but you can also use it to reset your finger joint jig later. Anyway, to start cutting, you put one of your work pieces right against the fingers, and the other one you're going to offset to the side. And to judge that offset, just take your scrap and put it between them. It's a good idea to clamp the two pieces to the fence as you run them. I held mine by hand, but you got to be careful because you can easily move them as you go through the cut, and that's going to mess everything up. So as you make cuts, you just walk it along, and you can cut any size joint on any size work piece. It's fully adjustable. And as with any finger joint, you can fine tune the fit simply by adjusting your dado set thickness. If your joint is too tight, add a shim. If it's too loose, take one away. Believe it or not, this was the very first joint I cut with this jig. It came out tight the first time. Can't beat that. This whole thing, the sled and the jigs and everything, was only a weekend project and I think it only took less than a half sheet of plywood. So it wasn't very expensive and it just does so much. 
I love this thing. I'm using it a lot already. So I hope you enjoy it.